Okay, uh, why don't we pray and then start. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you. It's a brand new day, packed with possibilities, packed with opportunities, God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for indwelling presence. We thank you that you lead us, Lord. You thank you that um, journey with us, Lord, through each day. We thank you, Father God, and we thank you that is there is so much in every step that we take along with you, Father God. We thank you that you lead us. We thank you that you equip us, train us, Lord, empower us. You impart your spirit, Lord. We thank you for everything, the gifts and the calling, and Lord, all that we have received from you, Father God. We are ever so grateful, O oh God, and this morning we give you thanks. We give you thanks, Father God. We give you thanks for the call that each one of us, Lord, has in you, Father God. Thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. Father, we pray for a, for a, for much clarity and sharpening of the call, Lord, that you have with each passing day, God. We pray that uh, each one of us will uh, move a step closer and step in fully, Lord, in the season that's ahead. We pray that we will step in fully into all that you have for us, Lord. We thank you. We bless your name. We bless your name. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory and we commit today's sessions into your mighty hands. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, yeah, so today we have, uh, I think, Nisha who's going to be sharing and also we have Salome and then we have, uh, um, who else do we have who's ready to share? Is it, um, um, is it Harrison or... Oh, Harrison has already shared. Okay, we'll start with... Um, we'll start with... No, I haven't shared. You haven't shared yet, Harrison? Okay, yeah. So you yeah. could... Yeah. yeah. Yes, you're also blessing. Yeah, you're also ready to share. Okay, okay. we'll just see uh, after Nisha and Salome. And, uh, and otherwise, we can, you can share on Friday, right? Okay. okay. So we'll, we'll start with uh, Nisha. Okay, Nisha, go ahead. Yeah, you can start. Um, Nisha, if you're ready, you can start. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm ready. I, I forgot to put it on mute. Oh, okay, fine. On mute. Right. Sure, sure. Go ahead. So the topic of my uh, message is God is always good in uh, whatever He does for us, and uh, the Christian life works beautiful some ways. We don't always know how beautifully God is working in our lives until His plan is zoomed in. And we see it for what it is. We spend many of our days uh, waiting, often anxiously, for God to reveal what He is doing. During this time, we have to trust that God is working in the midst of our circumstances to bring about His goodwill for us. One of the classic examples of this is Joseph. His story is one of pain and prosperity, triumph and trial. Yet in the midst of it all, he looked to God's hand and trusted God's sovereign purposes. Let's look at a few windows into Joseph's life from the book of Genesis and see how we can learn to trust God's plan of our lives. We're going to read Genesis 37, 5 to 8, 26 to 28 and 50, 15 to 21. Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear, hear this dream which I have dreamed. There we were binding sheaves in the field. And behold, my sheaf arose and all stood upright. And indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brothers said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. 26 to 28, Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let, let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers listened. Then Midianite traders passed by, so the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver and they took Joseph to Egypt. 50, 15 to 21. 
When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, Perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph, saying, Before your father died, he commanded, saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin and for what evil they did to you. Now please forgive the trespasses of the servants of God your father. And Joseph wept and they, when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face and said, We are your servants, Joseph. He said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am in place of God. Am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In order to bring it about at, as it is this day to save many people alive. Now therefore do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Joseph's story is rich with wisdom and insight into our own struggles and conflicts. The same God who was with Joseph is with us. What can we learn from Joseph and how we look to God's hand in the midst of conflict and trials? Point one, know that you play a role in your own suffering. The opening verses of Genesis 37 reveal a bit about Joseph's character, at least at the outset. We learned that Joseph, Jacob loved him the most and that Joseph brought bad reports to Jacob about his brothers. We want to guard against going where the narrative does, not take all that is uh, that we see. If we see the image of young Joseph, he seems to be a pesting, a tattletale little brother. We even see further evidence of dysfunction and conflict between the brothers when Joseph retells his dreams to them. They rightly understand it to mean that Joseph will reign over them one day. When they heard, when they heard it, they hated him even more for his dreams. This, of course, led to their betrayal. All in the conflict. As we will see, but humans are responsible for their own actions. We don't want to place all the blame on Joseph, but we should not overlook the fact that he provoked at least some of the hatred from his brothers. James 4 says, What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The, con the causes of conflicts here are one's own passions and desires. We can say things, buy things, go places, visit websites, pursue relationships that damage us. We cannot always claim innocence when it comes to conflicts and suffering. Sin causes conflicts. Let us not overlook this sobering fact. We are the biggest danger to ourselves. How are you to prone to overlook this truth? Do you tend to always blame God or others for your conflicts and trials? What are some of the ways you cause your own suffering? These are questions that we should ponder upon and, and look at ways to correct with the help of the Holy Spirit. Point two is resist the temptation to revile back. At the end of Genesis, after Jacob's death, Joseph's brothers begged him to forgive them of their transgressions against him. When they spoke to him, jo Joseph wept and said, Do not fear, am I in the place of God? He then assured them that he would take care of them and their families. Joseph, one of the most powerful men in Egypt, refused to harm his brothers. The hurt they caused him was real. The evil they meant against him was real. But Joseph saw a greater plan at work which led him to forgive them and seek their good. How can we apply things in our life? In what ways have you retaliated against others who meant evil against you? Will you instead trust Christ's love and example to overcome this temptation? Point three, look for God's hand in everything. What Joseph said to his brothers in chapter 50, verse 20, is amazing. What he did not say is even more amazing. He did not say, 
as for you you meant evil against me but god used it for good nor did he say as for you you meant evil against me but i overcame it with for good rather he saw god working through their sin and evil intentions god mysteriously worked through the wickedness of his brothers to bring about joseph's triumph in egypt and the saving of many lives through the famine this is only something that god can do this raises many philosophical and theological questions about the nature of god free will sovereignty and the nature of caucasian but joseph never engages these issues he saw god at work in everything god's hand moved and guided joseph's life and joseph trusted this he knew what we learn later from proverbs the lot is cast into the lap but its every decision is from the lord says in proverbs 16:33 god is sovereign over all the details of our lives he upholds sustains and governs everything scripture is clear god does not sin and he is not the author of evil rather he is good and does good we can trust that all the details of our lives are in hands Romans 8:28 Are we trusting in God's sovereign plan in our life? Please be reminded and encouraged that he is always he always works for good. To conclude, the evil Joseph experienced at the hand of his brothers is heart-wrenching, but it is nothing compared to the evil the Lord Jesus experienced. He the sinless one suffered and died at the hands of sinful men. Yet Luke reminds us that God predestined this to take place in Acts 4:26 and 27. The death of Christ was God's plan to bring about the salvation of many people, and if God did not spare his own son, how will he fail to give us all these things? This is our hope and our trust in the midst of conflict. Amen. Amen. that was good uh, nisha thank you thank you so much um i think it was a good topic um the goodness of god especially in the background of suffering and evil that we see around uh, you know the goodness of god and um yeah so it was good i think uh, you brought out a lot of um, a lot of very pertinent points you know like suffering um and also i think it's very important um Uh, what you shared about our role in suffering you know suffering is because of various things because of original sin because of uh, others actions because of our own actions so yes um, and also uh, some of those applications you know resisting the temptation to pay back uh, having the perspective to look for god's hand in it even though things are evil you know how is god the good god um, going to step in and change things so yeah it's good uh, well presented thank you um i think uh, some more time to um you know taking time to probably read the scriptures out like some of those uh, important uh, verses uh, towards the end right um acts chapter 4 and 26 to 28 and and so on so i think that would be um that would uh that would help us to retain it better but uh, on the whole it was good thank you so much thank you well presented bless okay um so um salome says that she'll present next week that's fine uh, next week as in friday salome if you can do that because the following week i i think we are done with everything all the presentations um we just have two more people to present um so we can do that on friday so if you can do it on friday that will be great okay okay um so yeah harrison if you're ready we'll go ahead with your presentation and then followed by that would be blessing if you're ready blessing okay okay go ahead uh, harrison all right good morning good afternoon good evening <laughs> in our yeah. different locations um thank you pastor for the opportunity to share what i have and um i listen to sister nisha you know when she cited you know the the story of joseph and that's another angle i'm also going at and i smiled you know when she was talking because it is one thing you know for us to come up you know with a topic you know, and we also see the movement of god in what he wants us to share or discuss 
Now, my topic is the garment of righteousness. The garment of righteousness and expectation says there is a garment of righteousness that needs to be guarded and guided with all diligence. I was reading um, the book of um, Genesis chapter 39, verse 1 to 20. And in the course of reading this Bible passage, you know, what struck my mind is who is taking off, you know, your garment of righteousness. And when we're reading the book of Genesis chapter 39, Genesis 39, and we're reading from verse 1, to 20 Genesis chapter 1 Genesis chapter 39 verse 1 to 20 which says now Joseph had been taken down to the to Egypt and Potiphar an, of, an officer of Pharaoh captain of the guard an Egyptian bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there the Lord was with Joseph and he was a successful man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found him in his right in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had he put under his authority. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house, and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptians' house for Joseph's sake, and the blessings of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he, f he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, and it came to pass after these things that the master's wife, you know, cast longing eyes on Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So it was as he as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. But it had happened about this time when Joseph you know, went into the house to do this to do his work, and none of the men of the house was inside. That she caught him by the by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. And so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, that she called to the men of the of her house and spoke to them, saying, See, he has brought in to us a Hebrew to mock us. He came in to me. He came into me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And it had happened when he had that I lifted my voice and cried out, that he lift, left his garment with me and fled and went outside. So she kept his garment with her until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with words like this, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came into me to mock me. So it, so it happened as I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled outside. So it was when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did not did to me after this manner that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners we are confined, and he was there in the prison. Amen. Now, my, my first point, you know, says, who is taking off your garment of righteousness? Now, when I look at the story of um, Joseph and uh, the Joseph and uh, Potiphar's wife, and 
the longing of uh, Potiphar's wife, you know, to Joseph and the government as it relates to the story. Now, one thing that struck my mind is, you know, that, that, that struck my spirit was, who is taking off your garment? A lot of times, you know, we find ourselves in situations, you know, that keeps us in, in a point, you know, where we decide, decide our fate. Now, it takes the grace of God, you know, for us to be able to understand who we are as Christians and not to heed, you know, to the counsel of the ungodly. And secondly, Joseph, you know, knowing who he was and knowing the act of wickedness, you know, towards his servant. And in this case, you know, it is not Joseph, you know, recognizing the fact that Potif as in the wife, you know, was the master's, as in the Potiphar is a man you know, who has given him everything that he deserves or he, he desires. And how come you know, can he now do such a wickedness? But one thing that the Bible made us understand that Joseph recognized the fact that it was a wickedness to God. And one of another question that comes into my mind is, why did Joseph refuse Potiphar's wife? And one thing that comes into my spirit is because he understood God's promises for a man's life. He did not just understood, but he feared God. When we find ourselves in such situations, do we let go of our garment of righteousness? Or do we guard and guide our garment of righteousness? Because out of it, you know, brings the issues of life. It's either, you know, we're highly favored by God or we are cursed by God. But that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. What does the story of Joseph, you know, teach us in this case? You know, I looked at, you know, James chapter 1, you know, and verse um, 12. And when we look at it, it, it speaks a lot of things, you know, about, you know, our desires as Christians. And what is James, you know, trying to let us know in such situations? That before anything, you know, can happen, it has been nurtured in our hearts. The desire has grown in our hearts. It does not just take one day for it to happen. But it is very important that we understand that, you know, for everything, you know, we do, there are consequences, you know, for every action. Often we regard being blessed as having material prosperity, trouble-free relationship, or healthy, healthy bodies. But James, you know, sees blessed man as one who is not a stranger to struggle, but persists to remain rooted in God under suffering and holds fast to, the, to his promise of the crown of life. No matter the pressure pushing him from within and without, he will not give in. Why? Because he understands that this earthly life is momentary. And people of God, you know, the question right now is, who is taking off our garment of righteousness and no other thing than sin? The only thing that can separate us, you know, from the love of God is sin. And that is why, you know, when I read the story of, you know, Joseph, you know, in the master's house and Potiphar's wife, there's so many things, you know, that comes into my mind, you know, on who I am as a Christian. What is my identity? Do I, re re do I recognize my identity as a Christian? Do I really know who I represent? And one other point, you know, that, you know, I have here says, who do you represent? Because... One thing, you know, we see in the life of Joseph is the fact that he represented God, not, you know, the master. In as much as the master has blessed him with everything, he, he recognized himself. He, he knew who he was. He represented God. And to us this morning, this afternoon, this evening, who do we represent? I pray that the Lord will give us grace, you know, to be able to understand who we are in him. So that you know we don't you know lose our garment of righteousness to the things of this world. May his word be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Harrison. That is good. Um, so the garment of righteousness. Yeah, I was I was a little concerned that when you started reading that passage, that if you'd have enough time to finish. But um, yeah, uh, um, I think those are some good um, points that you highlighted uh, from Joseph's life. It's interesting that uh, Nisha also 
chose to speak about uh, joseph um yeah just um just a couple of uh, things um um yeah uh, i think it was it was quite well structured and well presented and uh, i i just felt that if you could highlight some of those things that you were uh, i think which you which you were doing you know, by asking some questions um and uh, but if you could uh, like even uh, there was one one question right over over arching question throughout which was who has taken your garment of righteousness uh, so i just felt that um, maybe for me you know if you could just break it down a little more that would help but uh, overall i think it was good um uh, and i think uh, but, uh, again a timely reminder to and i was also trying to manage my time yeah uh, yeah i realized that yes yes and uh, and uh, yeah and a, and a good reminder about uh, the righteousness uh, for as a believer as believers that we are you know uh, the uh, the righteousness of god that uh, we carry as a gift and not to compromise with that yeah um but i think that's a very powerful passage and a, and a you know powerful example of uh, joseph in the old dispensation um holding on to integrity and uh, uh, you know the kind of accountability that he, that he had with god uh you know something for us to emulate something for us to hold on to yeah, praise god um yeah so thank you harrison thank you so much um sorry about that um Yeah so next we have a blessing blessing if you are ready you could go ahead and uh, present it uh, Charles you have a question sorry uh, just a minute blessing Charles do you it's not a question but it's something that struck mm. my my mind as a brother was sharing when he said uh, that it takes the grace of god for one to know who they are Mm-hmm. really it is true it is takes the grace of god. it's god again who who gives you the identity and you are able to know who you are and that's what exactly happened to wow. yes. yeah and maybe one more thing was about that garment of righteousness uh, there is somewhere the mention of about the uh, joseph rather joshua being given the garment of righteousness and they, they removed the old garment and then they gave him a new garment i was trying to check for it in the bible but i had not it there but i think it would also be a good thing to crown it all thank you right charles so i think that was a figurative thing uh, when he referred to uh, you know the uh, it is used as an yes. analogy Uh, about the garment and then you know about our garment of righteousness yeah uh, okay so blessing i think uh, your powerpoint uh, maybe you need you need to uh, um yeah that's fine that's better thank you okay yeah good morning go ahead, please good morning okay good morning everyone my name is blessing and i want to present you on god's mercy thank you pastor for the opportunity to that you have given on to us to present and share god's word with each and every one um but any god's mercy i would like to see something about god's mercy um god our father is holy and he actually wants us as well to be holy so you know the lord does not dwell in sin he does not dwell in unrighteousness he wants us to live a life that befits us as children of the kingdom of heaven holiness for us is to be set apart from the things of this world and of course we cannot achieve that um by our own strength by our own efforts by our own courage or by our own intelligence we need god's mercy in everything that we do for it to be successful In the Old Testament holiness was generally connected to God's with God's perfection but when we believe in Jesus as our Lord he cleanses us from every appearances of evil from every form of unrighteousness I would like to share the following bible verses with us to describe God's mercy Psalm 103 verse 8 to 12 says in the message bible it says that God is a is sheer mercy and grace not easily angered he's rich in love 
He doesn't end endlessly nag or scold nor hold grudges. He doesn't treat us as our sins. I believe we can see it, but because of time, I cannot read everything. But um, th this Bible verse is making us to understand that the Lord always forgives, and forgive and sin. And mess forgiveness is an is just an is just one part of mercy of God's mercy because we need mercy generally in all areas of our life. So mercy is not just ascribed to just forgiveness of sin. So it's just an aspect of God's mercy. So God does God forgives and he forgets. He doesn't remember our sin. He cannot even tell that, oh, blessing have sinned so, so time. He knows that anytime you are sincerely sorry, anytime you run to the Lord for mercy, he's ready and willing to forgive you. But we, we must not dwell in sin because the Bible says that Mm, mm. But make us to understand that um, can we shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So we must not dwell in sin just because we know that the Lord is always merciful, is ever merciful. No, we must repent and hand and hand over everything, submit our ways, our will, our thoughts, our emotions, everything in entirety to the Lord. Another scripture that make that, that describes God's mercy perfectly is Ephesians chapter two, verse four to six. He said, "Instant." immense in mercy and with an incredible love he embraced us he took our sin dead lives and made us alive in christ he did all this on his own with no help from us then he picked us up and set us down in highest heaven in company with jesus the lord has made a companionship for us with jesus by our messiah by his mercy he has taken away the sin dead lives in us and made us alive in christ so let us always believe that by the mercies of god we are alive in him god sometimes allows us to see the depth of what we are capable of so sometimes um, we see god's mercy because of some certain things that are certain stages or certain things that we have passed through God allowed us to see those things so that we can see the heights of what he's capable of doing in our life. So there are three areas of our life that we actually need God's mercy. One is for, is for falling short of his glory. That is when we have sinned against him. We always call for mercy. Secondly is to fight for us from unseen circumstances or, thing that, or do those things that are around us that are unpredicted. Sometimes we, cannot even, we don't even know what will happen in the, in the next moment of our life. In the next minutes, we don't know. So we have to cling on the mercies of God. Things like natural disasters, we can't say it's our fault that it happened. Sometimes we have signs of it, but we don't know it will happen. Like the other time in Nigeria, I don't know if we heard about the news, um, Lagos City, a building just collapsed. Sometimes we, are, we, we attribute certain things to the, to, we, we, we actually place challenges or we place blames on, we, we channel blames on a man. But sometimes the misses of God is what averts some natural and even man-made disasters. So those disasters that we think that are man made, the mercies of God is what averts them. So we need to be calling on God's mercies consistently in our life and without relenting. We need to be telling the Lord, Father, I don't know what will happen in the next minutes. Father, please, by your mercy, preserve me. Another, the, the third area where we need the mercy of God is because of the battle. To battle the consequences of ignorance or lack of knowledge. Sometimes the Lord is speaking to us we don't even know. Sometimes we hear what the Lord is saying. Sometimes the Lord is telling us to do something and we are not even heeding to his instructions. Maybe because we are hidden in sin. There are a lot of things that will happen to us because we don't know. So because of your ignorance, because of your lack of knowledge, because of your not doing those things that the Lord expects of you, you still need to cling on the mercies of God. And also... The beauty of, of the holiness is to be like God and to live a life that is sanct a sanctified life. We as Christians, we are called to be ambassadors of the kingdom, ambassadors. And we can only gain this, this ambassadorship status by clinging on the mercies of God. As just as Paul was saying, he was crying out and he was saying, ah, I know of the things that I have made up my mind not to do, but I see myself doing that. And some of us can testify to this as well. Many times we, we have made up our mind not to do some certain things and we still see ourselves falling prey to those things. It's not because we don't have the willpower to resist, but sometimes we are weak on our own. So we need to be pleading the mercies of God every day of our lives. And there are some prayers I want us to make. I want us to thank the Heavenly Father because He is a God of unlimited chances. He has given us so many chances to life, so many chances to forgiveness. The chances he has given us are always unlimited. 
please let's take note of this prayer we can pray in our quiet times tell the lord that you need his mercy and that is why you are confessing your sins and errors whenever you sin please make it a habit to ask for mercy whenever you willfully sin because I was reading a, I was reading some parts of the Bible and, and I realized from Revelation that there are two kind of sin, the two kind of errors. There are sincere errors and there are willful or presumptuous presumptuous errors. The sincere errors we always have are those ones that okay we don't know or we, we don't have control over them. But the willful one is those sins that we have seen consciously. So that's why most times if you listen to this to the prayer of mercy, you see those times that I have seen consciously and those that and those times that I have not seen. And those times that I've seen unconsciously, Father, please forgive me. So we have those sincere errors and we have our willful or presumptuous errors. So let's always ask the Lord for mercy in these two aspects. Because the Bible has made us to understand in the book of Proverbs chapter 20, verse 13, that we will never succeed in life if we try to hide our sins. But when we confess them, when we forsake them, the Lord in his infinite mercy, we have mercy on us. So um the book of james chapter 3 verse 2 also make us understand that we all stumble in many ways so because of this fact now we need to make a prayer heavenly father uphold me by your righteousness so that i will not stumble onto destruction and calamity sometimes you are stumbling because of the consequence of your sin and it's only the lord that that will have mercy on you to avert those consequences because with the with, with the lord with jesus some protocols are suspended some rules are broken no, we know if we sin, we, we face some calamities, we face some consequences. Some, some consequences are even instant when we sin. But because the mercies of God is available, the grace of God is sufficient, whenever we sin and sincerely ask the Lord for mercy, indeed he shows mercy. But we must not dwell in sin. The last prayer I want us to make is, Father, by your mercy, whatever is meant for evil for me and my family, by anyone or by any power, turn it around for my good. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. And God bless you. Uh -huh. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Blessing. I think that was uh, wonderful to close with, uh, with prayer and uh, yeah, the, those prayers that we can make. Wonderful. Thank you for reminding us about the mercy of God and the reality of, um, um, you know, uh, reality of willful or uh, uh, willful sin and also sin of... Uh, uh, you know, that we don't do it willfully, but we sin by omission. Um, yeah, thank you for reminding us of that. I think that was that was really good. This is the first time we've heard you speak. <laughs> it's good to hear you. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, I can see the comments here. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Um, I think um, I think that that was that was really good to close with prayer, um, and uh, and also the reminder about um, the God being the God of unlimited uh, chances, right? Unlimited unlimited opportunities um, to uh, to come back, right? He he always places that, and that's the grace of God. Thank you for reminding us of that as well. Um, I just felt that uh, maybe if um, uh, if you had, you know, in the application, in, in addition to prayer, of course, uh, if you had um, given us a couple of steps of, you know, how, um, what should we do? Uh, obviously, you know, you, you, you presented that in the prayer as well, and also the slide before that. Um, but, you know, just to... Um, again, remind us of what are those steps that we can take and what is it that really fights us from coming back or pre uh, prevents us from coming back to the mercy of God. Uh, I think that would also help. I mean, this is uh, just, a, just a thought that I had that, you know, because we, we want to come back to the mercy of God, but then uh, because of uh, uh, because of the fact that we are discouraged, we, we find it difficult to come back. Right, uh, or sin has hardened our hearts so much that we find it difficult to come back. Um, but uh, what, some things that we can keep in mind to come back to the mercy of God and receive life again, you know, I think that would be helpful. Yes, yes, can I share a bit about that? I was just considering my time, so I had a loss, but I couldn't share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you could, you could, and also, um, you could also uh, upload the PowerPoint. Um, uh, on the stream so we can go through that. Yeah. So what is it that you wanted to share, Blessing? 
uh, you, oh, you were saying that you wanted to share, but then you didn't have the time. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, that's great. Uh, we really, we we're really blessed by these um, uh, today's, uh, you know, today's sermons. Uh, whoever presented, um, Harrison and uh, Blessing and Nisha, thank you so much. So next class, we would have uh, Salome. Salome, if you're ready, on Friday, you could present. And then um, I think that I'm just trying to see who else is. Um, uh, let's, let's just put it here. Just accessing that. Okay, I think we have um, Salome and then Oluwafemi, Louis, and uh, yeah, I think that's those are the two two other names we have, uh, Louis and then uh, Salome. So has everyone presented, or would you like to present? Um, if there, if there's anyone that was left out, you know, you can do that on Friday. Okay. Um, Okay, so we'll we'll close here. Uh, we'll stop here, and I think it's been a, it's been good to hear every one of you. Uh, what we will also have is um, the quizzes being uploaded, so yeah, you could uh, you know finish that anytime um, uh, before the twenty sixth. So those will be uploaded uh, shortly, so you can yeah before the twenty sixth if you can you can finish the quizzes. Um, yeah. So Nisha, you can upload that, please. You know, the Word document of the message. You can put it on the stream so everyone can uh, take a look at that. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless. Um, and have a great day. Have a great. Um, uh, we'll we'll meet again on Friday. Right. Okay. God bless you. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. Right. See you, Harrison. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor. Bye, Maxon.